Hi everyone, this is our weekly blog and today I'd like to talk a little bit about the difference between the balance method and DNA. A lot of people ask this question and I think we need to explain it more thoroughly. The balance method of course came from Dr. Richard Tan. He um, got the idea of it by by talking with Dr. Chow Chen. Now Dr. Chen was an old master of Chinese uh, acupuncture working in Los Angeles. He was from Taiwan and in conversation with him Dr. Tan learned a lot about Chow Chen's version of the, of the vessel systems and the vessel relationships and out of those conversations came the balance method and the balance method is basically um, looking at the I Ching and looking at the Baguas of the I Ching and using uh, vessel relationships like Yang Ming Tai Yin Tai Yang uh, where hand Tai Yang treats foot Tai Yang, foot Tai Yang treats hand Tai Yang and developing ways of treating the body distally. And why do that? Because it worked very well. It worked better than the method that was being, that was being taught in school, which we today call poke and pray, the local needling. Distal needling is very, very old, and Dr. Tan systematized it and marketed it around the world. And thank God he did, because he basically, in my opinion, saved acupuncture in the West, for sure. His method is based on the idea that if you have pain anywhere or dysfunction anywhere, it's due to a lack of energy flowing through the meridians of the body in that area. And the way to fix that energy flow problem is to needle other energy meridians in other places in the body that will improve the energy flow in the pathological area. Unfortunately, this energy model is not accurate. It's certainly not based on the Neijing and it's based on a mistranslation of the Neijing by Sully de Moron. And I was very close with Dr. Tan. I even taught courses for Dr. Tan. And I spoke regularly at his forums every year for many years. And I was considered a worldwide expert in the balance method. But behind the scenes, I was always talking to Richard and saying, hey, look, at it. it's not energy. And I knew that because even in school I knew it because I had met Dr. D. Kendall and we became very close, and I spent hours and hours dis discussing the proper translation of the Neijing from Dr. Kendall. And I became convinced, along with talking f with philologists of the uh, Han language, one of which is a very close friend of mine, Dr. Goodman, and he also assured me, yeah, qi doesn't mean energy, and the word mai certainly doesn't mean a meridian. Mai means vessel, and qi has several different meanings, the most common of which is vapor, or air, or vital air. And where is the vapor? It's flowing in the zhue mai, according to the Neijing. And I talked to Richard about it extensively, and he's, you know, he's always, we got along very well. And he, um, I just couldn't get him to change. I mean, I think he agreed with me, but he was so locked into this magical stuff from China that he didn't, just didn't want to change. So it was obvious, obviously from the get-go two things. The balance method worked extremely well, but the reasoning behind it was flawed. And so over time, I began to explain how distal needling works in a much different way. First of all, I knew that the energy meridians are basically blood vessels. And they ship nutrient, they ship qi, they ship zhue to all the tissues of the body. Nutrient is called yin qi. It's the nutrient that's extracted from food, and it's in the blood vessel system. Zhue is obviously blood cells, and then there's qi, which translates as vital air or the essence of air. Obviously, is oxygen. So, I began to describe distal needling in terms of needling vessels and improving blood flow in targeted areas of the body. The only problem with that explanation is that uh, that's not accurate either because pain doesn't reside in a blood vessel and we're not really needling blood vessels. What are we needling? We're needling tissue. We're needling the whole fascia planes of the body. We're needling into muscle groups, tendons, ligaments, and joints. And what are those in Chinese medicine? Those are the Jing Jin, the 
tendinal muscle organization of the body. The Jing Jin is not a meridian. It's not a line through the, the muscle groups. That's another mistranslation. The Jing Jin is simply an organization of all the physical tissue of the body, especially the fascia planes. People refer to the Jing Jin as a Jing Jin Mai, but there's in the Neijing, there's no Mai associated. There's no vessel. It's not a vessel. It's the organization of tissue. So what are we needling? We're needling into tissue, distally. What are we affecting? We're affecting blood flow into tissue somewhere else. What is that tissue somewhere else? That is Jing Jin. So we're needling the Jing Jin to improve the Jing Jin somewhere else. Now the amazing thing is that the ancient Chinese did not give individual names to the different muscle groups. What they did was they named the muscle by what blood vessel delivers nutrient into that blood vessel, which is brilliant. Because they saw that, well, if the muscle or the tendon is uh, problematic, there has to be a restriction of nutrient flow into that tissue. So they named all these um, organization of muscles, they named them with the same name as the vascular vessels, as the Mai, the Jing Lao Sun Mai. So now we can simply take the ancient relationships between vessels from the I Jing, and we can just now consider those to be Jing Jin. What does that mean? It means the large intestine Jing Jin treats the stomach Jing Jin. The large intestine Jing Jin treats the liver Jing Jin. The large intestine Jing Jin treats the lung Jing Jin, and so on. This takes Chinese medicine away from the mystical realm and brings it right down to real anatomy and real physiology, which the Neijing spoke about. Chinese medicine is, in fact, a cardiovascular medicine, and health is based on how good does the nutrient flow through your body through these mai, or the vessels. Health is highly oxygenated, highly nutritious blood coursing through the human body. That is health has nothing to do with energy meridians or chakras or anything like that. We're not saying that there isn't energy in the body, but I can assure you the Neijing is not talking about that. The Neijing is talking about real tissue, real blood flow. That's why in, ancient, in these ancient texts the Mai were visible. It says very clearly in the Neijing the Jing Mai is not visible because they're very large vessels that flow right next to the bones, deep in the body. But the low Mai are more shallow and can be seen, especially at the wrists and the ankles. And if the low Mai at the wrist and the ankle is red, there's too much heat in the body. If the low Mai color is too purple, uh, there's too much blood stasis in the body. If the low Mai is too blue, there's too much cold in the body, and so on. If there's a lot of heat, the vessel expands. If there's a lot of cold, the vessel contracts. Obviously, in ancient times, the vessels were visible. They were not psychic conduits. All this energy stuff started in 1932 with Sully de Moron. He just mistranslated Qi as energy. He mistranslated Jouet Mai as an energy meridian. And the balance method, unfortunately, is greatly hindered because of the energy interpretation. And therefore, when we talk about DNA, we're not needling along meridian lines, okay? If there's pain in the quadratus femoris muscle of the leg, if there's pain in that muscle, then we're going to needle the muscle group along this large intestine pathway on the arm, okay? Now, the beauty of DNA is we have a lot of choices where to needle depending on where the pain is. If the pain is on the lateral side of the quadratus femoris muscle, then we're going to needle on the lateral side of this muscle here that's associated with the large intestine Jing Jin. If the pain is on the medial side of the quadratus femoris, okay, then we're going to needle on the medial side of the large intestine Jing Jin. So, that's why in DNA we're not following along lines. 
we're needling into muscle groups and you can needle on the lateral side of the muscle, the belly of the muscle, or the medial side of the muscle. That will be determined by where the distal pain is. If you just needle along the large intestine line, ignoring the Jing Jin underneath of it, then you, you're only needling into the belly of the muscle at a distance. In other words, you're affecting blood flow in the belly of the muscle in the quadratus femora, femoris. So DNA, we completely break away from the energy model and we completely free ourselves up from these classical acupuncture points. Our needling will look totally different. It's not following lines. It's needling into connective tissue, fascia groups, either one side of it or the other side of it or down the middle of it, depending on where the distal dysfunction is or the distal pain. This makes DNA far more effective as a method than the balance method, especially in getting rid of pain. It's far more effective. And we have been teaching this method worldwide and people who practice the balance method and practice DNA, they're, they're quite certain that DNA is far superior because it's real. It allows us to visualize the body anatomically and see where we want to needle in order to make a distal problem go away. Hopefully this makes it clearer to you. And uh, we love Dr. Tan very much. The balance method uh, we really appreciate because it revolutionized how people needle around the world. And now we feel we've improved upon it. And that improvement we call distal needling acupuncture which has been sponsored out of this clinic and now we have the pleasure of teaching it everywhere. So I hope that you um, understand the difference. If there's any questions, you can put it on the blog. I'll be happy to answer it. And um, you guys have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye now.